Welcome to the Buda Brewery. The small town of Abita Springs has been our home for a long time, and it's actually how we got our name. Abita is Louisiana's very first craft brewery. We started creating our full flavor at ales and lagers in 1986, long before people even started calling it craft beer. Abita is brewed for the way we love to live in Louisiana. Wherever you find great food and good times, you'll find Abita beer. We work hard every day knowing that we represent Louisiana culture on tap. Thanks for coming and I hope you enjoy your time with us here at the brewery. Welcome to the brew house mezzanine. Before we get to all of these giant tanks, the first and most important thing to remember is that beer is made of just four ingredients, water, malt, hops, and yeast. Some beers, like our Strawberry Harvest or Purple Haze Raspberry Beer, get some extras added in. But at its most basic, that's all you need for beer. Water, malt, hops, and yeast. Then it's all about the quality of those ingredients and how carefully you can turn them into beer. Here in Abita Springs, we start off at an advantage with our first ingredient, water. Water for brewing can't just taste good. It also has to have the proper pH balance in minerals because it makes up over 95% of your beer. Abita's pure spring water has been a key local resource for generations, and it's naturally perfect for brewing. Malt is that second main ingredient, and it refers to pretty much any cereal grain, sorghum, rye, wheat, oats, barley. Most of the time, however, we're going to be talking about malted barley. Malts give beer its color, flavor, and body, and come to us pre-roasted to varying degrees. Different degrees of kilning changes not only the color, but flavor of the malt as well. Lighter malts give off more bready, toasty flavors, while darker roasted malts give off coffee or chocolate flavors. Malts are packed with all kinds of wonderful starches that we want to get a hold of. We start our process by milling the grain. Now this gently cracks open the husks, exposing all the delicious stuff inside. Here at Abita, we use a process called wet malt milling to prepare the grains to release as many of their sugars as possible during the brewing process. That malt gets stored in the silo to your right as you look down the line of tanks. Now we're ready to start the actual brewing process. The first vessel on the left is called the mash tun. Inside, we combine our first two ingredients, hot water and malt. The hot water in this vessel is going to activate enzymes in the malt which break down the starch into sugars, sugars that our yeast will eat later on. The water and the malt are going to hang out in this tank for about two hours and make a soupy mixture called mash. We pride ourselves on our environmental responsibility here at Abita, so I'll point out that we don't waste energy here just to heat up water. Instead, we pump water down the line past other parts of our process that naturally produce heat. The mash we just created is now transferred to this second vessel called the lauder tun. This vessel has a false bottom that acts like a strainer or a coffee filter. The liquid in the mash flows down through the grains, collecting all of those nice sugars as it drains out through the false bottom, while the grains stay up above. The liquid separate from the grain is no longer called mash. We call this super sugary liquid wort. Yeast craves sugars and this wort makes the perfect food. What do we do with all of our leftover grain? We pass it along to be fed to some very happy local dairy cows instead of their conventional feed. Our grains are really good for their bellies. In the next step, we'll add our third ingredient, hops. Hops are the flowers of this really tall vine-like plant and look a bit like tiny green pine cones. When boiled, they release essential oils and alpha acids, which impart a bitter flavor that balances the natural sweetness of the wort. This next vessel is called the kettle, which does what any good kettle should do. It boils. We add hops at three different points during the boil. Bittering hops are added twice early on in the boil, and aroma hops are added closer to the end to add a beer's beautiful hop aroma. Right next to the kettle, you see our vapor condenser. We recover all of the steam from our boil and use this energy to heat up the next brew. We've got one more vessel to visit up here on the mezzanine, and that's going to be the Whirlpool all the way down at the end. Now the Whirlpool is going to do something pretty crazy. It's going to make a Whirlpool. What this helps us do is separate the wort from something called trub, which is really just leftover hop particles and proteins that can affect the flavor and shelf life of your beer. At this point, we still don't have beer. We still have wort. 
that super sugary liquid food for our yeast. When the wort leaves the whirlpool, it's very hot, and yeast is a living organism. It can't withstand that kind of temperature. So we pass the wort through a heat exchanger to reclaim some heat for other processes and to bring the wort down to a temperature that's a little more comfortable for our yeast friends. This temperature can vary from 50 to 75 degrees, depending on the brew. Once the wort is cooled down, we pump it into one of our fermentation tanks to meet up with our yeast. Yeast is single-handedly going to transform this wort into beer, so we really like those guys. To make sure we're using the best yeast for each brew, Abita uses several kinds of specialized brewer's yeast from around the world. The fermentation process can take anywhere from 4 to 14 days, depending on the style of brew. During this time, the yeast consumes the sugars in the wort and produces two byproducts along the way, alcohol and CO2. When 85 to 90% of the fermentable sugars have been consumed, we close that tank to capture the remaining CO2, giving the beer natural carbonation. After this fermentation process is complete, we've got beer. As we've mentioned already, we take our impact on the environment seriously here at Abita. In addition to feeding our grains to those dairy cows and managing our heat output efficiently, we're the first and only brewery in North America to use this Equitherm system, by the way, we also use solar panels to generate some of the energy we use to brew beer. When those panels were installed, we were the largest commercial harvester of photovoltaic energy in Louisiana. We also run our own industrial wastewater treatment plant to generate clean and renewable biogas that fuels our boilers. Our bottles use less glass than traditional long necks, and we even send our reused bourbon barrels to Scotland to be used to make scotch whiskey. After fermentation, beer needs to be aged in a process that we call conditioning. This final step is really important because it allows all of those different flavors to mellow out so they're not competing on your palate, but rather coming together to create a delicious beverage. This aging process is different for each one of Abita's brews and can last anywhere from 14 days to three months. To enhance their flavors, some Abita beers get moved to a secondary aging tank. Others run through our special hop forge, where we add even more hops in a process called dry hopping, which gives the brew an intense hop flavor and aroma. And some special beers, like our Bourbon Street brews, are aged in oak barrels. We have enough beer aging in these tanks for everyone in the Superdome, Smoothie King Center, Tiger Stadium, the Cajun Dome, and Tulane Stadiums to have a beer. After aging, the beer passes through the centrifuge, which filters yeast and microproteins from the beer. Often, a second step of plate filtration is used to give certain beers that crisp, clean, see-through quality you're used to getting in your glass. Abita is one of the few American breweries that chooses to filter through sustainable, disposable, and biodegradable pads that are 50% cellulose from pine trees. Now our beer is ready to be bottled or canned. Our automated bottling line is pretty amazing. In fact, it's one of the first of its kind ever installed in the United States. At top speed, it can fill, label, bottle, date, stamp, and package up to 24,000 bottles or cans an hour. That's the capacity to create a thousand six packs just in the time you've been on this tour. Every bottle is washed and dried, then double evacuated to force any oxygen out of the bottle to prevent it from going stale. The bottle is filled with beer and promptly capped. Labels are applied and bottles are grouped and packaged. The process for cans is much the same, just without the labels and caps. Pallets of beer are wrapped and stacked and eventually loaded onto trucks to be shipped out to thirsty Abita fans all across the country. Before you head back out into the tap room, let us tell you about a few of our 26 varieties. Amber was the first beer we brewed, and it's still one of our most popular selections. Purple Haze is also pretty unique and popular. It's an American-style wheat beer made with fresh raspberry puree. Super refreshing. And Wrought Iron is a tropical-style IPA that's our first beer to use our unique Hop Forge Dry Hopper. Now head on back to our tap room and try out a new brew, or enjoy your old favorites right here at the source. And thanks for visiting us here at the Abita Brewery.